<laughs> øh, det er jo, øh, og øh, Jakob er hovedpersonen, men øh, der er to andre med, vigtige medvirkende i dag. Det, det er Claus Rasmussen fra Aarhus Universitet, som er sensor. Øh, og der er så flere, der kommer og læse Jakobs rapport og, og komme her over og være med til samme sted. Ja. Og så er det mig selv. Lars Vilhelmsen, øh, jeg er ansat her på Statens Naturhistoriske Museum, og jeg har været Jakobs vejleder under specielle projekter, som har været øh, de sidste halvandet år. Og det, der skal ske nu, det er, at Jakob han øh, vil holde et foredrag, hvor han vil fremlægge øh, sit speciale. Det var en 20-25 minutter, tror jeg. Ja, øh, og øh, det bliver på engelsk. Øh, og derefter øh, så går vi så over til at eksaminere Jakob. Øh, i rapporten, og også det, han siger i sit forhold. Og det, det er sådan, at det, der, der vil Jakob helst have, at det foregår uden publikum. Så der bliver lige en kort pause, hvor I får lov til at gå udenfor. I kan gå ind ved siden af øh, i kantinen og tage en kop kaffe, og så, øh, så, så fortsætter vi med Jakob her. Og øh, vi regner med, at det, det, det hele skal ikke tage mere en times tid, og så skal vi finde ud af, hvordan øh, vi synes, han har klaret det. Ikke? Og så når vi har fundet ud af det, så, så kommer vi ud og meddeler. Øh, Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. My project is called Danish stem wasps and wood wasps, an investigation into the species richness and distribution of the Danish stem wasps and wood wasps. So, first of all, I'll, I'll just um, hammer out what I'm going to talk to you about today. Firstly, I'm going to give you a short introduction to what I wanted to do with this project. And then I'm going to tell you what stem and wood wasps are. I'm going to um, I'm going to tell you what uh, materials I used for this project and what my methods broadly were. I'm going to summarize my results, and then I'm going to pull up some of those results and that I find particularly interesting. And lastly, I'm just going to round it uh, round it all out and give some conclusions to the whole thing. So first of all, what is this all about? What I want to do with this project was to investigate the species richness and the distribution of the Danish stem wasps and wood wasps. I also wanted to um, document their biology and I wanted to create a modern identification key for the Danish species. So, what exactly are stem and wood wasps? The stem and wood wasps are all uh, symphutans, meaning that they are a part of the uh, of the group of hymenopterans that are the most primitive of the um, of that uh, of that particular order. They all have uh, they all have in common that they lack the um, traditional wasp waist, the constriction between the first and the second abdominal segment, and with one exception, namely the family Cephidae, they all have um, two wart-like um, uh, protrusions on the. Uh, on the meton uh, on the metanotum, uh, called uh, kinkley, and the uh, the suborder um, Sufuta, that is this part of the tree that's this part of the tree here everything left of the um, uh, of the red uh, of the red dot and most of these are um, are uh, are phytophagous. however with one exception that is the family of Ocidae, that are carnivores. Um, most uh, the uh, the, fam uh, the suborder Symphuta contains both um, uh, species with internal and external feeding and development. However, the groups we are looking at today, the stem wasps and the wood wasps, they all have internal feeding and development. Um, in Denmark, the stem wasps and the wood wasps they're pretty minor pests. They they are uh, they aren't really of any concern, and however, internationally, especially in uh, South America, South Africa, and uh, and North America, some of these species are very invasive and cause quite a bit of economic damage. And lastly, the um, uh, the suborder Symphuta, it is um, per it is paraphyletic, meaning that there is a, uh, meaning that it does not contain all of uh, all of the um, of the original descendant of the original, um, they're not all the descendants of the original uh, spe uh, spe uh, species here. So, the three families I've chosen to deal with here today are 
uh, are the cathedrae, which are the so which are all of the uh, which comprise the stem wasps, and we have the cyclocidae and cyphridae, which comprise the wood wasps. Um, the Cathedra is the largest of these three families. It has 165 species across 24 genera. Three of these genera I've been able to document in Denmark, namely Calamuta, Cephus, and Hatikia. Calamuta and Cephus primarily attack um, grasses to use as their host plants, and Hatikia they attack ro um, members of the rose family. Um, next up, we have the Cirrocidae. Is the smallest of these families, with 124 species across 20 genera. Four of these genera are, um, are found in Denmark: Cirrus, uh, Cirrix, Umuseus, and Cirrus. And their host, their preferred host organisms are conifers for Cirrix, Umuseus, and Cirrus, and angiosperms for Trimix. With the exception of Cirrus, they all have a um, a symbiotic relationship with a wood decaying fungus that they deposit into their host organisms when they lay their eggs. And they all have a, a, um, a, 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 a toxic mucus that they uh, excrete whenever they, um, whenever they lay their eggs, which uh, severely damages their host organism in conjunction with the aforementioned, um, the, the aforementioned fungus. Lastly, we have the Cyphridae. Uh, that family consists of 146 species across 28 genera. Only one genus is present in Denmark, that is Cyphridae, and they primarily attack, attack angiosperms of various kinds. Also, they also live in a um, symbiotic relationship with a wood decay fungus. So, what did I use, and what were my methods? My material, the material I used to gather my data, comprised of the collections of the Natural History Museum of Denmark and the Natural History Museum of Aarhus. And the and the collections I uh, I used comprised of 916 specimens for the collection for the collection of Danish stem wasps and wood wasps contained here. And I also took a visit to Aarhus to investigate their collection and they had 218 specimens. And when I investigated each collection, I identified each specimen anew to ensure that it was correctly identified in the original collection. And I primarily used the key by Quinlan and Gold back from 1981 as uh, my identification key, supplied with various other sources from, uh, from around the literature. And then, once I had identified each and every specimen, I entered the information contained on, uh, contained on each specimen into the database, speci uh, database specified for the... Uh, I did that for the um, collection in, in HMD. However, the, um, uh, the Natural History Museum of Aarhus, they have their own um, database, so I entered instead the information into a Excel spreadsheet that they then enter themselves into their own database. I was also supplied a map of Denmark with the formal districts entered into them. Um, that was kindly uh, supplied to me by Ingrid Gengmark, the original author. And any location data found on the various specimens were entered into that map um, for, uh, so that I could document the distribution of the various species. Lastly, I, in, uh, I intended to create an illustrated um, identification key, and for that purpose, I took various photographs of the um, different species to illustrate the traits that are you, uh, that are useful to identify the various species. And I used the various um, photography, um, the various pieces of uh, photographic equipment here on the museum, either the um, uh, either the set up um, by Alexei up on the fourth floor on, on, or the photography laboratory on the first floor. So, what were my results? I was, able, uh, I was able to document 17 species of stem and wood wasps in Denmark. As you can see, one of them is in red. That's because all of the specimens of that species 
I identify to be other species. So now there are no um, specimens of Venus Humospati left in the collection, which is a subject I'll come back to later. Um, furthermore, um, what you can see here is all of the species I found, and then the various formal, dis formal districts. And, and this chart shows where each species can be found. As you can see, some of the species are very common in Denmark. Um, most, uh, the, uh, the best example is Cephus pygmaeus here, present in all of Denmark. The same with Ulceus gigas, that are present in all of the formal districts. And furthermore, these two species are the most numerous in the collection. Also, there are the complete reverse. There are some species that are tremendously rare in the collection. Uh, for instance, um, Cephus bacchuseus here, present in only one um, formal district, and the entire uh, uh, genus of Patitia. Uh, the various species are uh, present in at max uh, four formal districts. And yeah. Next up, we have the key. The original, um, uh, well, the current most, the current key to Danish species of um, uh, of stem wasps and wood wasps is contained within the work, uh, the work Denmark's fauna, and more specifically the contribution by Nielsen and Henriksen from 1915. This is an excellent piece of work. However, it is somewhat out of date, as it uses outdated nomenclature. Several species are missing from the key. Some are wrongly labeled as various, they are wrongly classified as various uh, gene, uh, genera species and even superfamilies. And then I find their, the description of their biology and their way of life to be somewhat lacking. So when I created my own key, I sought to rectify uh, rectify these perceived shortcomings. First of all, uh, first of all, I created a, I based it on the key by uh, Quinlan and Gold, the same one I used to identify the various species by, and I illustrated each uh, trait that I found to be um, that I found to be useful for identification. Like this, like you can see here, a picture, uh, a picture, a, a high quality picture showing the animal in question. A label for for ease of identification for what that picture you are talking about, an arrow and a, uh, and a description of what the trait is. Secondly, I used up to date classification and nomenclature for all the species. I compared this to the database eCatsum, well, the World Catalogue of Sumatra, and then I wrote an extensive um, summary of the families and the genera which I think is, well, that rectifies the limitations of the original work. Furthermore, I took pages pictures of all the species, one for the male and one for the female. And the example is the one you see here, and an example is the one you see here for the female, Ubusius gigas. And this is an example of the maps I spoke, about, uh, I spoke of earlier. Each map, uh, each map is for one species, and each dot is a single occurrence is a single occurrence of each species. And as far as I could, I tried to limit it to one uh, to one location, meaning that if more than one uh, if more than one specimen was recorded in the same place, such as uh, such as in Bundesdel or Brug or anywhere else, then only one dot would be put on the map. And this is a map of the genus Hartigia. Some species were simply not very numerous, like the genus Hartigia. So in that case, I, in, in, I, put, I united the maps into one covering the genus level, and then each, co each colored dot on the maps then represent a different species. And in the actual map, there is a, um, there is a legend telling which color is which species for the discussion. I mentioned that Janus Sumasperti was, um, was, was previously in the collection and then I identified it to be other species. Well, I found it to be, uh, I found, there were four specimens of the species originally in the collections. 
and I identified two of them as being a uh, Hatsikia nigra, uh, one was a Hatsikia linealis, and one was a um, Cephus pygmaeus. So that puts into question the existence of this species in Denmark. However, I've done some digging on the literature and I found two sources that claim that it is present in Denmark. One is the database Elle Arter, and the other is the work I mentioned previously, Denmark's Fauna from 1915, which states that it is uh, that it is found in Western Jutland. However, the authors of um, the, uh, of this uh, of this work in Denmark's Fauna, Jos uh, Nielsen and Co. Hendriksen, they I have tr I have tried to track their collections. Jos uh, Jensen's collection was posthumously uh, acquired by the uh, by the museum and was subsequently added to it, which means that I have actually had that in my hands and identified his specimens. And Kay Hendrickson, he was an employee at the museum here, which makes it very likely that he would have donated his collection to the museum. So that leaves only uh, that leaves only Denmark's Fauna, uh, no, not Denmark's Fauna, Elle Arda as the only source of the claim that this species is present. However, it is it is known as being present in Sweden and much of uh, and much of northern Europe. Especially, especially, I have confirmed sightings in in Germany, France, and Great Britain. So it is. It, so I can't say that it's present here in Denmark, but I can say that it is not terribly unlikely that it, it that it is, since it is present in all of the neighbor of the neighboring countries. So next up. A lack of recent records. Some of these species are rare, and the and one of, and some of the most prominent examples are the animals I'm shown here: the entire genus Hatikia and the species Tremex fusicornis. These species there are very sporadic. There are very sporadic sightings. For instance, Hatikia linear, uh, linearis was last found uh, was last recorded in Denmark in 1937. In, the, in these collections, and Hatikia septosoma was last documented in 1963. So that made me think: Has this species gone extinct in the meantime? But there is a similar example: Hatikia nigra. Um, there was almost there was a 98-year gap between records. One was found in, 19, in 1904. And then, for almost a century, no, uh, no, none of these species were added to the collection until um, 2003, where a specimen was added. There's a similar story with Tremic fusicornis, where almost a, where over a century passed between records. To me, uh, to me, this indicates that just because one of these species have not been present for quite a while, uh, well, have not been recorded in the collections for quite a while, it does not mean that the species that the species have gone extinct since we have uh, we have you know, we have precedent of almost a uh, of over a century passing between uh, between records. Okay. Then we have Ceres Chiricahua. This species is native to Arizona and Colorado and thought to be native to Mexico also. Two specimens were found in Unistel Harbor in 2015. So, whenever a new uh, a new species is introduced to any area, my first um, question is: Is this species invasive, or does it have the potential to be? And in my uh, and in my estimation, Ceres chiricahua is unlikely to be invasive. First of all, there is a very long there is a very long distance between the uh, between the donor region the donor region back. In Colorado and Arizona to, De uh, to Denmark, and the sheer length that the animal would have to travel to Denmark would also induce uh, environmental attrition on the um, uh, on the animals. Um, oh, I forgot to oh, I forgot to mention since it was it was still harbor, it is most it was most likely brought to Denmark via uh, via infected infested timber uh, into the uh, into the harbor. And yeah, I mentioned that there was a long 
uh, that was a long, uh, it has a long way to travel. Furthermore, um, its host organism is thought to be pine trees. And while we have plenty of pine in Denmark, they are also very heavily, uh, they are also already used as host organisms for the local species of, um, of wood wasps, namely, um, namely the species Cyrix noctilius, Cyrix juvencus, Uruseus gigas, and Cyrix spectrum. They all use um, pine trees as their host organisms, among, uh, among others, which means that Cyrix juvencus would have a great deal of local competition uh, uh, to acquire a, host a viable host organism, which would hamper establishment. Furthermore, there is a uh, furthermore, there is a rather uh, there's a the difference in climate between these two reg uh, the the donor region and Denmark, uh, Arizona and Colorado can be rather uh, can be rather dry, uh, can be rather dry, and it's also a lot a lot a lot more southern than than Denmark uh, than Denmark. This uh, these climatic differences could also greatly hamper. Um, establishment. All of these factors brought together, this makes me th uh, this makes me think that it is. Uh, oh, one more thing. Cirrus chiricaua. We only found two specimens. That indicates a rather low population, uh, well, a rather low introduced population, and all of these factors together uh, uh, points to uh, to me points towards is having a rather low probability of establishing itself and becoming invasive. Now, here are, this is Cyrix noctilium and this is Cyrix ubicus. These are the two um, species of the genus Cyrix present in Denmark. As you can see here, oh, it's not coming up well, it's not coming up well here. Uh, sorry about that, but this was supposed to be a, this is supposed to be a map of Cyrix juvencus um, um, occur occurrences of Cyrix juvencus, and unfortunately it doesn't show very well. But it's very um, it's very widespread in Denmark, and you can see a few of the dots here but of Cyrix juvencus, which is less numerous. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's, I don't know what happened there. Um, but the point is that Cyrix noctilium is less numerous and less widespread in Denmark than Cyrix juvencus. And I find that to be odd, namely because Cyrix noctilium is very, very invasive on a global scale. It is, uh, it, has been a, it is a major pest on pine plantations in South America, in South Africa, in Australia, in New Zealand, and it has been recently established in North America. And uh, and it is uh, and it also has the sole ability amongst the uh, cirrus uh, amongst the uh, wood wasps that it is able to attack and kill healthy trees while all other um, uh, while all other wood wasps are forced to you uh, well they have to use either weakened and dying trees or dead trees as their host organism. Um, this was odd to me, so it made me think. Is there, uh, does Cyrix Jubinkus have some sort of climatic or competitive advantage over Cyrix Nantilium? And it turns out that it does. Um, most of the, um, the of the wood wasps present in Denmark, they emerge in early, uh, in early summer, almost two months earlier than Cyrix Nantilium, which would mean that Cyrix Nantilium has a great deal of competition for the, um, uh, for, the prime, uh, for the best host organisms as the other species have a two months head start. Furthermore, uh, furthermore, I think that there is some sort of climatic um, factor involved, namely that Cyrix noctilio seems to prefer warmer climates. It is in fact the only Cyrix species found in the Mediterranean uh, climate, uh, climate area, meaning that they have, meaning that they prefer dry, uh, dry warm, meaning areas with dry and warm summers and wet winters. And, um, uh, and and, uh, and a uh, and a study by Carnegie et al. tried to model the um, uh, model the potential range of uh, CX noctilium, and they found as you went uh, as 
the species goes spreads further north, its um, it, its projected survival rates drop, uh, drop rather severely. So these factors combined makes me think that CHMT prefers uh, a bit warmer climate than we have here in De uh, than we have here in Denmark, and combined and that climatic preference combined with the fact that the other species emerge quite a lot sooner is uh, the cause of seasonal to being the less prevalent of these species. So, for the conclusion. The stem wasps and the wood wasps are very widespread in Denmark. 16 native species <coughs> confirmed. I have been, I have not been able to, um, well, Jameson's bat, bat is not present in the collection anymore, and possibly no longer in Denmark, and Sears Chiricao is unlikely to be invasive, and Sears Chivencus is more abundant than Sears Chiricao due to climatic factors and competition. And that is that. Yeah, we do a shoot for the offering.